What is up, you guys? So today we are going to be addressing the idea of grayscale or white blocking, which is basically creating an outline for your map. So to begin this process, just simply open up uh, a project. It doesn't have to be anything specific for this one in general. We're just going to be going with the first person perspective template. Uh, and then as for um, these options here, just make sure that you have the starter content because it's um, going to basically give you the assets uh, to create the map that we're going to be creating today. And then just simply create project. So if you haven't watched my previous tutorial, uh, I cover how to move about the, uh, the environment in Unreal Engine. But today what we're going to do is we're just going to simply uh, come in on this cube here and when you click it you're going to see that there's a little device that shows up in the middle uh, there's a lot of different terms for it uh, an axes model a gizmo those types of things but basically pretty much what it is it's uh, representing the different types of locations so you have your x-axis your y-axis and your z-axis all those are reflected here with the same color so blue a z as a blue green green Y, red, X red. Now there's different ways that you can actually move about um, actually changing the location of this object. You can simply click the specific arrow and drag it into the direction that you want to drag it in. Or you can also do it uh, more specifically in the location uh, drag wheel over here. So if for instance, you can't get it into the exact spot that you want it to get into. You can just simply come over here and do some micro adjustments to get it to the spot that you want to get it to. Uh, another thing that we're also going to be addressing is that there are different types of gizmos that you can interact with in the interface. So right up here, you're also going to be able to rotate the object and uh, scale the object, which is also represented in the same format over here. So red, red, green, green, so on and so on. But as you can tell, you can rotate the object based on its axis um, that you want to have the object located in the first place, as, along with the scale. So there comes hotkeys with these options. So if you hover over the top of it, you can actually see what letters actually take you to those specific um, shortcuts. So for R is for rotation, and you can see that the gizmo here actually changed. Uh, you have E, and then you also have W as well. So E, R, those are your hotkeys. One thing that you can do too is this white square that's in the middle is basically actually directly moving it to that specific location. But that also changes depending on what options you have selected. As seen here, you can actually scale it bigger when you're doing the all at one time. Or you can shrink it all at one time. Those types of things. One thing I do want to point out too is when you are in the rotation aspect, when you click and drag it, you can see that the numbers are taking place here. Those are actually your degrees. So that's negative 70 degrees etc etc so when you're working in this type of environment and you want to rotate it to a specific um, section make sure that you are thinking in the concept of a circle or 360 degrees so when you have you know at the baseline zero and you go to 180 it's going to be the same thing but it's just going to be flipped in the opposite direction so that took me believe it or not a little bit to understand that because I wasn't thinking of this as 300 degrees. I was thinking that like each individual section here were totally different numbers. And I'm like, why is there four different things? When in actuality, as you can see, it's just based on the circle concept. So I, <laughs> I thought that that might be um, kind of self-explanatory to you guys. But at the same time, though, it's something that I didn't really catch on in the beginning. So I'm just kind of sharing my experiences of uh, what didn't work for me, just in case you're in the same boat. So for the next team here, uh, when you actually play, you can see that the object kind of fell down here. And when you shoot it, the object's flying about. That's because in this particular template, it is set to be uh, in a physics-based asset. So one thing you need to also realize, too, is underneath the transform thing, there are different features. 
So as you can tell, the object that we have selected is set to the movable uh, ability, which is basically showing uh, the uh, overall aspect to add physics to it which we'll discuss a little bit more later on in a different video uh, but if you want to have a style that is something that you can walk on and make sure that's happening um, and you're not like going through everything and it's not flying everywhere you want to set it to static so as you can see here when we click the floor which is highlighted that is set to static and that's because we can walk on it so now that we have it set to static you can jump on it and we can actually click on it, and when we shoot it, it doesn't go anywhere. So the next thing that we are going to do here is the concept of grayscale, or white boxing, also known as outlining. So basically, in a game environment, the, uh, the designer and the team kind of puts out like a roadmap of like what they want to see, what they want to have happening, that type of thing. And so what they do generally is instead of just randomly putting in textures and building assets and then having to rearrange that, they do a general outline and general layout of the concept of everything. And then that way they can continue to work on it, change it, modify, etc. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do that same concept. So let's say we just wanted to make a simple uh, platform. So, depending on the assets that you have um, that you want to put in, we are just going to specifically be using the ones that are included in a starter pack, which I talked about in the beginning of this video. So, what you can do is, like we talked about before, is we can change these different settings over here on the right hand side to get the desired um, shape and object of the things that we want. So, what we're doing here now is we're just simply kind of making an entrance to our platform. So as you can see here, we're decreasing it down. It looks like we're coming up here. Uh, now you can copy the assets that are already in this world, or like I showed you in our first video, talking about the basics, is you can actually just bring in another object, set the controls that you want it to be. And so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply line this up to our box that we have, kind of stretch it out here, make it fit to what we're doing, make sure that's tucked in there. And what we're doing is we're just basically creating an overall outline to what it is that we um, are thinking about creating. So depending on the map that you're doing, like if you were making an island, uh, or a running scene or a building or a road layout those types of things uh, you're going to design your map accordingly based off of what you're going for but because this is just simply a tutorial video and it's just a demonstration we're just going to be simply doing some simple stuff what we're going to do is we're going to continue doing this and then what I'm doing here is actually if you select the object and do control C like you were going to copy it, um, something from the uh, you know Google Docs or something, it's the same concept. But as you can see, when I copied that, I didn't copy very well. You can actually go up to edit and you can undo or you can do control Z. But once again, control C and then do control V to paste it. And you can see that it modified over here to the right and when you drag it it copies it so now that we have that in place let's put it back over here to the second side and you know what we are going to we are going to come off on the other side so now that we have the general outline in place to me, this actually kind of looks like a, a platform for like a train station. So as you can see, like a train would pull in here, but it's kind of bland. Now, when you're doing white boxing and outlining, each person is different depending on how they work. I personally like to add in uh, presets for the objects that are going to be there. So for instance, if I was going to be decorating later on, I would bring in an object for the cube. And I would go down to the static mesh, which, like I talked about before, is kind of like the skeleton of the objects. And let's say we were looking for a bush. Not brush. Bush, if I can spell. 
when you click that, as you can tell, it creates kind of like the skeleton of everything. And so that kind of gives me a general idea. Well, like there's going to be a bush there. Um, there's going to be a bush here. And let's do another uh, bush over here. So now as you can see, it kind of gives a general concept that there's going to be a platform here uh, with some decorations, some plants. Uh, it's missing something. Let's see here. What else do we got? Uh, it's missing a bench. Yeah, there we go. You gotta have a bench when you're waiting for the train to come. So when you play now, you kind of get the idea. You go up in the platform. You know, you're sitting. You're waiting for your train to come by. It never comes by. You know, you got some lovely plants as you continue on your way uh, through the rest of your quest. But let's say uh, you're not really good when it comes to having everything white and so it can kind of be confusing on the eyes that's okay you can add a little bit of color it's just a basic outline of everything so the easy way to do this is you yeah you can come down here to materials which is the skin and you can specifically look for the uh, object material but the easiest way in my opinion is just to simply come down here to the yellow arrow and click it and it sets it to its default skin so let's do that to the objects we place down and as you can see, it gives a little bit of color and environment to our train station platform. So when we click play again, as you can see, we can come up. You know, hey, we're sitting here, we're waiting for the train. You know, we got some nice bushes going on, that type of thing. So one issue I'd like to cover uh, again briefly in the previous part of this video is the idea of lining everything up. As you can see here, sometimes there are gaps in your outlines, and that's okay because, like I said, it's just the general concept idea. What's not okay is if you were going to be testing the environment. And so, like, let's drop this down and have like a gap that is too big. And so, if we play, you know, you're not going to be able to get up there. Um, the easiest way so, and the best way to remember that is your character has uh, has body parts it has legs and so if it cannot get up there in the first place it's not going to be able to do that so as you can see this is a better example this cube is just simply too big and so we just we cannot get up there and so when you're doing your outlines make sure that if you're going to be testing your outlines that you have everything generally decent like this right here that's not gonna be causing too much problem because you're not you know catching on it and it's just the general concept but if you got something more extreme where you just can't simply get up on top of the environment uh, that's gonna be a little bit more of an issue when you're play testing the concept and see how everything flows see how everything plays or would play so if you wanted you know a smooth transition where you know you're having a good flow you're going to want to make sure that you're going to be able to experience that in your prototyping stage and your outline stage because if you can't experience that in your outlining stage you don't know if you're actually doing that effectively or not i really hope that helps you with kind of coming around to the beginning concepts of unreal especially when it comes to actually starting a video game and so the best place to start is to actually create the environment in which the game is going to be in my personal opinion, it's a lot easier to make an environment and to create concepts for that like location and setting than it is to add the mechanics in because that's going to be a little bit more technical aspect of things. And so just take the time to mess around with Unreal, play with the engine editor a little bit, figure out what works for you, how to move and rotate everything. And once you kind of get that general concept and core idea down, you can actually begin the process of um, creating a baseline for your mechanics and gameplay later on and so that's kind of why I actually included this video near the beginning of the series so that way you can actually get a concept um, to the ground of everything and so as we progress further the tutorial is going to become more complex more mechanical based uh, it might seem slow now but uh, just bear with me it will pick up and it's going to get a lot more fun but as of right now have some fun 
see what you can come up with, see what you can create with your outlines. Mess around, you don't have to have everything white, you can add some color into it, see what you can make. Uh, and then actually share that with me if you're willing to, because I would love to come check out what you create. You know, So just hit me up and I would love to swing by and see what you did. But without further ado, you guys have a good day.